Hey folks, it's Joseph from Viger, please. So Peter and I recorded last night, and we intended to do a short segment on the announcement that occurred at the big Star Trek convention this weekend, but that particular segment ran so long that we decided to cut it out and sort of release it as a special edition uh, of our thoughts on that topic in, sp in specific. So uh, here it is, I guess. Enjoy. Well, Peter, um, I want to pause our our general Voyager focus for just a just a hot second here. This weekend, I'm, we're recording this on August fifth, so evening of Sunday, August fifth, two thousand eighteen. Uh, there was some hot Trek news that got handed down on uh, on on Saturday, yesterday, that uh, I think is worthy of some exploration. I want to point out as a as a pride prideful comment here this news you're going to talk about the first exposure I had to it was Bill posting a link to the article on the Vija please trauma support page and I saw it and I was like wow and since that my entire fucking feed on Facebook and I use Google News heavily and I also use you know the swipe the Google Assistant now feed it's just nothing like I had to unfollow a Star Trek story being a Star Trek fan because it's just nothing <laughs> But pictures of Patrick Stewart. <laughs> I don't understand why that would be bad. I could stare at pa pictures of Patrick Stewart for an extended period of time. There is no world news as far as my Google Analytics or Facebook feed. There, there is no nation. There is no Donald Trump. There is nothing. There's only Patrick Stewart. You it's, know what? That sounds like a fucking improvement, bro. Like, why are you, why are you bucking the trend? I think Google's looking out for you. It's crazy. So what's the big news, Joe? Well, the big news is that uh, Patrick Stewart made a surprise appearance at the big Star Trek convention in Las Vegas, which was this weekend, and announced that he is returning to playing Jean-Luc Picard for an as-of-yet uh, unrevealed in any detail uh, new Star Trek show for CBS All Access. The strong reports, the, the strong rumors out of CBS is that it's going to be a limited series focused on, you know, where essentially Jean-Luc Picard went in the 30 years since uh, the end of Next Gen, I guess 18 or so years since the end of Nemesis. So it'll be a continuation of the whole 24th Century Federation storyline and a, a continuation of Next Generation essentially as a consequence. I feel very emotional right now. I haven't read any of the articles for it. So I've got a personal policy. If there's something I know I'm going to be interested in, I stay the fuck away from all the promotional materials. I stay away from movie trailers. It's like, yeah, obviously I'm going to go see, you know, the new Avengers. I, I don't need to to watch stuff. It's just going to, it's, it's going to ruin shit. I like being surprised. Um, so you've actually told me more than I've heard about anywhere else. Uh, God, I got a lot of conflicted emotions. How is this not a special podcast sidebar? I think, feel like we could do <laughs> this entire one hour episode as just a, a special thing. God damn, man. That's, I never thought he would have ever put the space suit back on. All the stuff that Patrick Stewart you know, had said is that he was done with the character and, and happy with the work he had put in and not looking to get back in. So I can only assume that there's a a lot of goddamn money on the table, and B, I think Patrick Ooh, Stewart so much, so much money. <laughs> I think he picks his battles. I think he's established enough that he's only going to go where he thinks some good work can be done. You know, look at Logan, which was fucking amazing. Yes, yes, and that you know he's going to do a solid one on the fans and protect the legacy of. I don't even know, you know, a, a masterpiece character and franchise. But on the flip side, can Star Trek, the next generation and the characters contained therein exist in 2018? And I don't think they can. Let me give you my hot take and then I'll cover your open ended question and my take. I obviously am not a fan of Discovery, as I have repeated at length over the course of the 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hours. Of let, me, let me pause you real quick. I want, to, I want to give you a congratulations. I do not agree with anything. I, no, I don't agree with 40% of what you've said about Discovery. 
I think all of the evidence that you have provided to support your cases, however, has been rock solid. And it leaves me with no recourse when you throw that stuff on the table. So I, I mean, I watched it to, I, to, I know. I, to understand. <laughs> and, and I appreciate you watching it and speaking as a viewer. I'm just saying that I am acknowledging the fact that your complaints, as you frame them, are legitimate complaints. And my only counter to most of those complaints is I like it anyways. Continue. Thank you. I, I'm not a fan of Discovery. I definitely think uh, Kurtzman is a hack. I don't think that uh, overall I have much uh, to say about his writing ability that is positive. However, I think that, as you said, Patrick Stewart is a man of such significant weight, particularly in Star Trek, because of you know the cultural power of next generation and his own uh, powerful legacy as well that he wouldn't do the show unless he had a level of control over how it was going to go and how it was going to be made i think you brought up logan as an effective show of what he can do when he lets loose on on some of the characters that he has been a part of for so long and be just amazing because of that I'm willing just to put my faith in the fact that Patrick Stewart wouldn't be doing this unless it was good. And his announcement basically said that, like he's gone back, he's watched some episodes, he's acknowledged that he didn't think he'd return to it. uh, But he's also acknowledging like this is a unique opportunity to tell another story with this character that he didn't anticipate. And uh, it's going to be a limited series. So this will won't be like an ongoing, which I think is the right call. Mm hmm. And, uh, you know, the focus is going to be on what the next stage of Jean-Luc Picard's life. It's definitely going to be focused on him. I'm sure other next gen players are going to be involved as it gets. I mean, they just rolled out that it's happening. They're not even to the point where it is cast or written or anything. They probably just have outlines. So it's going to be a long time before we see this. Despite my d- distinct dislike of Discovery, I... I will have hope and faith that Patrick Stewart being involved with this predisposes that it can happen. And to your open-ended point about can these characters exist in 2018, I'm I'm going to shed my hatred for a moment and I'm going to give you the raw me. I really want them to, to the point where I feel like they almost need to, because it's the exact kind of thing that is missing in pop culture now. Next Generation and Jean-Luc Picard as a character are so resonant is because they are something that you can look up to. I am a 35-year-old man to who this to this day have in my cubicle his quote from uh, the episode where they're testing Wesley for the Academy. So the quote that he gives in the episode, Wesley's beating himself up because he can't um, pass the test in the holodeck to be able to be admitted to the Academy. And he says – he's trying his best. He doesn't understand why he can't succeed because he's the child genius, right? Mm-hmm. And he looks at him and he says, it is possible to commit no mistakes and mm-hmm. still lose. Mm-hmm. That's not a weakness. That is life. Perfect. You don't see that kind of like – kind of deep moments that really touch you like that anymore in television you don't feel hope you don't feel something for the future that could be something to aspire to you don't see role models who are tr- who who honest to god are people you want to emulate like stem to stern you don't He's a have a special character in that, rega- that regard and i want him to exist in 2018 because i want other people to to be able to have the same experience i had to the point where i still see jean-luc picard as the kind of person i want to be all of the crew members, and and we talk about it pretty frequently. What are we going to call the crew of the Enterprise? If we're going to throw them on the D&D alignment, will we say that they're lawful good or n- lawful neutral? Lawful lawful good for sure. I think you can get into some nitpicky instances where they let the prime directive stop good from happening and, and are willing to sit on their hands while, you know, Cardassians, ter- whatever. But I think really the big picture that, yes, they are lawful good. Everybody – on the episode, everybody on the show is a good dude with a clean work environment. There's no bullshit workplace drama. There's not none of that nitty gritty 2018, you know, really late 90s, 
you know, all of 2000s realism that's injected, right? They're not real characters by today's TV standards. And that's why I say, can they exist? Saying it's going to be a limited run. I love limited run stuff. Cowboy Bebop being, you know, the prime example where you can tell whatever oh, yeah. story you want and you can have it go as hard or as soft or whatever. It doesn't matter. By the time the fans see it and react to it, it's already done. You're not trying to appease the crowd to keep the machine going. So I think that gives them a lot of artistic license. And you don't have to worry about, are these good guys? My, my fear is my fear is right now, next gen exists as a masterpiece and that there's such a huge capacity to soil that. I want to talk about uh, Blade Runner, right? Blade Runner 2 came out. And I was afraid. It's like, man, there's no way they're going to be able to do the first film justice. I would rather there just be nothing in this thing to exist as a pristine cinematic uh, achievement instead of, you know, trying to cash in on that sequel thing. And and we were wrong. You know, Blade Runner oh, yeah. uh, 2 was, was fucking amazing. Surpassed the original. Probably the only time I've seen a sequel do that. I agree. You know, so lightning can strike twice and, and good things can happen, but... A, I'm afraid that they're going to soil the legacy. And B, I like the fact you don't know what happened. I'm, I'm afraid as a fan that I'm going to watch John luc Picard die. I'm going to watch the Enterprise E get blown up. I'm going to watch the end of the Federation because you're you're talking about big stakes here. We haven't gone back to the 24th century since uh, Voyager wrapped. You know, there's a lot of what ifs. You got what Star Trek Online and they're cockamamie fucking whatever is going I, on I, I guess the la- we a, a little after voyager is when nemesis came out it was like the next year sure fair enough so, so nemesis is really and it's a pretty wide open door of of hope and there's been some loss you know it was a better bittersweet end at the end of uh, nemesis but your mind can wander everybody's more or less in the same place you're down data spoiler alert maybe b4 turns back into data who knows but these beloved characters are safe and sound with a bow wrapped up on it. And I was able to put it on the shelf behind a glass case and, and look at it. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid not only of the legacy being ruined, but I'm afraid of watching these things, these people I love die and CBS all access, right? Is a paid media streaming service. You got to get people to pay to get access to this content. Discovery was a strong play. You got two things you can count on when you're a big company, right? There's a there's a glass case on the wall and it says, in case of financial emergency, break glass. And there's two things inside of this glass case on the wall. One is Final Fantasy VII, and God knows that fucking Sony has pulled that lever time and time and again. When it's time to bail a fucking game system out of the trash, like the PSP, you make Advent or Crisis Core or whatever using your Final Fantasy VII characters win. You, you got, uh, you know, lagging sales on something. You interject those Final Fantasy character property in there. Boom. You got instant sales. People just, they zombie right towards it, right? And the second thing I think is going to be Star Trek Next Generation. Discovery maybe is not cutting the mustard. Maybe CBS wants to grow this all access thing bigger. And I think that John Luke Picard and the Enterprise D crew and Star Trek 24th Century, you're going to get that rabid fan base. They're going to go up cash in hand, not giving a fuck about you. You know, this this CBS all access could install spyware and and child porn on your computer and people are going to shovel money at them to get access to it because it's that potent and it scares me. You know, because are they going to do it justice? Are they going to give fan service and some real late 90s, seventh season quality Star Trek? Are they going to go dark and dirty and try and bring this Discovery gritty format, which I appreciate. I know you don't like it. I'm going to say it again. Discovery might not be good Star Trek, but it's great science fiction. If you take Discovery and put it in, instead of Starfleet, just call it, you know, Space Dudes or whatever. (laughs) Space Arm, Space Force. It would have been, uh, right. you know, I think a lot of your complaints, your well-founded complaints would have just melted away and be like, yeah, that was a pretty fucking cool thing I watched. And it was a good story on its own. Are they going to take that grim 2018 Star Trek mishmash, whatever, and be like, and now Picard's in it. My first understanding, I, when they started talking about Patrick Stewart back in negotiations to reprise Picard, I was afraid of like, are they going to fucking shoehorn him into Discovery? Part of what I really like about Discovery is I'm content. And if you guys don't listen any further for the next 20 seconds, if you haven't watched Discovery, 
I'm content to just say, fuck it. That that is a different that is an alternate timeline or different dimension or whatever. It's not my Star Trek. It's just a different Star Trek and, and leave it at that. That's why I can divorce myself from all the shit that's wrong with it. It's just it's a cool what if. And if they jam fucking Picard in there somehow, I it's it's going to be pukey. So you saying that there's a strong possibility it's going to be a limited run vignette on its own uh, really puts my heart at ease. Well, let me unpack some of the things you've you've shared. Because uh, I think you've had a, a, a you said a lot that's worthy of comment. Uh, I don't think I would like Discovery, even if it were just space dudes. I think that half of my complaints are Star Trek specific. The other half is far more basic structure, far more basic performance. You know, the strength of some of those actors is just not there. I would hate it less, but I would not like it. I think that that show fails on essentially every conceivable level. Under, again, under any circumstance with some of these same people involved, I would not be hopeful of them doing some kind of TNG reboot, except Patrick Stewart being there. I, uh, I'm i glad also that it is a limited series. I think that uh, provides a, stru- a narrative uh, path for them to create something compelling. I am okay with the concept of watching John luc Picard die. Because I watched Logan. I watched Professor X die. It was devastating but it was served an amazing purpose it served a great story great stories sometimes have amazing endings and i am okay with seeing one for tng essentially if that's what they choose to produce i think that uh that could be really compelling and i think a story that they could tell and a story that i hope they tell is instead of trying to shoehorn them into this uh shall we say 2018 version of star trek what an opportunity to, to break glass, get the TNG uh, stuff out, and demonstrate a sort of moment of trying to reclaim that optimism and hope. And, you know, we have to be the best version of ourselves version of Star Trek and why it's necessary in 2018. And that that's the, the purpose. That maybe the Federation is in a bad place at this point in the timeline. And maybe it is Jean-Luc Picard, Will Riker, and Jordi LaForge, and the rest of the gang who have to remind them of what they're supposed to be to begin with. It's a little meta, but that's what I'm hoping for. Because obviously with the Discovery Season 2 trailer that they put out, they kind of fucking know that they need to do that. They're clearly trying to fucking roll the darkness back. Maybe this is them doubling down on that strategy to bring back that Star Trek that we love. That's what I hope. I think part of it, too, is that the the bow I said that they put on where I was able to set it on the shelf content. I think that all good things really flesh the future, a possible future out, a scary future out well. And I was happy that you know, basically the the resolution of all good things that they were undo, and that's where that hope of some, you know, a, a better tomorrow that is to be determined in your head came from. Um, I don't want to keep. Let, let's, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know what, uh, Peter, I'll probably just cut this whole part out and post it as something special. Yeah. The fact that at the end of all good things, Picard told everybody about what their potential future was. Whereas, like, we watched what happened with some stuff here on Voyager where Harry Kim declined to basically tell anybody about other futures and that sort of thing. You know, such a powerful example of why that show's good and why other shows fail to, like, gel, you know? You know, because he wanted uh, – that was just one potential future. He wanted a better future for the people he was close to. And, of course, the fact that he comes in and plays poker with them is the last shot of the whole series – that, you know, he's now going to allow himself to be close to these people. Yeah. Like not, you know, like truly and emotionally, Um, which is why you could serve that ending by telling a story of how that helps the remain, how they use that to help the remainder of the Federation, the remainder of the galaxy. Did you by any chance have a chance to swing through the Facebook group, (laughs) that announcement thread? My idea, if you're going to take uh, Patrick Stewart back into Star Trek, but you know you you can't make up Dixon Hill, yeah, the Dixon Hill <laughs> Knight Rider mashup. Like I did that thing as a spoof, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, 
I, I don't know if this is actually terrible or not. I, I, I might prefer this to just dragging the characters through the trash. At the end of the day, this is going to happen. You know, we're past the point of no return on this. Right. And all we can do is hope. So I'm going to hope. I'm going to trust in Patrick Stewart. I'm going to trust in his immaculate portrayals of John Luke Picard and his integrity as an established actor who ultimately I think has no fucks to give about bullshit and, and values his own integrity. And uh, we're going to boldly go forward on this and see what happens and reservations and stuff aside. Um, I'm genuinely excited by the things you said. And I'm also going to go ahead and throw out there that we better be fucking doing a, a blow by blow podcast on that thing along the side as these episodes come out. You know, I'm with you a hundred percent on that. And I have to hope and no one involved presently with Star Trek except for Patrick Stewart. But my faith in him is essentially unlimited. So I will hope along with you. <laughs>